जुड़ी और आपका आज वीडियो स्वागत है तो आज जो वीडियो हम लेकर आए हैं वो थोड़ी लंबी तो जरूर है बट भाई हमें बताया गया कि बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग है और आपके साथ बैठकर हम लोग देखने जा रहे हैं टाइटल क्या बताएंगे मौसम टाइटल है माइंड ब्लोइंग मॉडर्न टूल डेट रिकॉर्ड महाभारत एंड्रोमाइना नीलेष नीलकांत टी आर एस थ्री एपिसोड थ्री तो चलिए देखते हैं वीडियो कैसे पहले आपको हमारी वीडियो की डिस्क्रिप्शन मिल जाएगा सब्सक्राइब किया लाइक शेयर को फॉलो करेंगे चैनल को उसके अलावा लोग चैनल का लिंक भी हमारी वीडियो की डिस्क्रिप्शन मिल जाएगा सब्सक्राइब किया लाइक शेयर को फॉलो करें चलिए देख लेते हैं वीडियो Do you think that the modern island of Sri Lanka was not a part of the ancient Ramayana? No, it would be part of ancient Ramayana. It wasn't Ravana's Lanka, east of Maldives. Mm-hmm. That's where Ravana's Lanka was. Right now, there is nothing, just a deep ocean. So effectively, you you are disagreeing with extreme right-wing portals, which highlight the Ram Setu as one of the most important. Correct. When we talk about megafauna, they say that all the animals that we see around us, only one percent of the animals that have ever existed, which is very <coughs> true. And also. the biggest extinction of them happened in 11000 BC beginning of a younger dries damn four tusk elephants that are also described in ramayana you see oh. for example that vertical line this hmm. is basically 15 meter sudden sea level rise in the middle of 6 millennium BC in the arabian sea that's krishna's dwarka getting destroyed where is this south america angle written about in the texts indra is the deity of the east direction indra established it there ananta is referred to the andes mountain with its sahasra heads as the each peak oh this is a real thing yes okay it's like almost 800 feet tall um how oh, deep have you gone in this stuff so shurpanaka is actually been married ravana's sister and has gone to south america it's lost knowledge they don't know who created they don't know why it was created but it's described in the puranas ramayana when i used to see graham hancock and randall carlson's work i always think there needs to be some indian person who needs to go down and do the same kind of work but from an india context on of my life meeting you today there's going to be many points during the course of this conversation where you'll be shocked you'll be sitting back in your seat wherever you are whether you're watching this whether you're listening to this and you're going to go into a spiral of thought and there's very few guests who can invoke that kind of reaction in both myself and the audiences we found an all-star ladies and gentlemen absolutely loved speaking to nilesh shok i've asked so many people these questions about the mahabharat and the ramayan nobody in the history of trs has been able to answer it with the kind of proof with the kind of research and with the kind of conviction that nilesh shok has answered these questions uh we approached this historical conversation from a scientific and evidence based bent of mind you're going to enjoy it as much as i did it's the first part of an epic two part conversation if you're someone who enjoys indian culture this is one of the ultimate conversations that have been uploaded on the indian internet i can promise you that and i say that because of the content that will follow this intro this is nilesh shok on trs Welcome to TRS, Nilesh Shok sir. Very happy to be here. I love that you are an engineer. I love it even more that you are an evidence-based, I'd also say passion-based modern day historian in many ways. Uh, this is something I've learned from Dr. Luke Coutinho, who told me that like expertise is always an outcome of passion. and expertise becomes more of an expertise when you back it up with evidence and data so we're doing a mahabharat and ramayan episode after a very long time on trs we've had archaeologists on the show uh i've noticed that often uh academically trained archaeologists and historians really value evidence and i'm sorry i'm starting it out like this but they often dislike people like you mm-hmm. uh i don't think audiences dislike people like you but it's always the professionals of an industry who have gone through that grind who've put in those years of work in their own studies who don't love it when someone without a degree actually comes and speaks but if you scan history there's been a lot of greats who've not gone to a particular college to study a particular subject and still become experts of that subject yeah let's begin by talking about dirt archaeology 
uh i remember reading one of the yuval noah harari books i can't remember which one mm. where he spoke about the concept of fictions mm. so he said that when you go buy a car which is created by skoda okay what is skoda really it's a company who thought of the name skoda the guy who started it who thought of the logo the guy who started it now when you think of skoda you're thinking of a car company mm. but truly what it is is a fictional creation of the guy who started it mm. the same is the case for um beer biceps my channel's name in 2014 i thought of the name and i thought of ha you know i'll make this youtube channel i'll call myself beer biceps it's a fiction that came out of my head similarly that's the case with history as well before history was taught in schools some person in the past thought that we need to teach our kids about all these things that happened before they came into this world mm-hmm. what do we call this subject let's call it history mm-hmm. eventually history grew in the story of mankind and mankind reached a point where they realized we need to go deeper into history okay so let's start a new field called archaeology hmm. so archaeology also began as a fiction in someone's mind and someone had to decide the rules of archaeology based on their experience in the field therefore the rules of dirt archaeology were created and dirt archaeology was created as a subject now the same rules which began as a fiction in some europeans mind have made their way to archaeologists worldwide and they are the flag poles that these guys follow which may be very good for their process but i definitely feel that those flag poles limit you to some degree at least Yeah and that's what I picked up from people like yourself and Graham and Gok that you guys think in open space you guys think in free space you all reference ancient texts and you all don't dismiss ancient texts based on the fact that they simply don't follow the rules of dirt archaeology now parallelly when you ask an archaeologist in India about the truth about the Ramayana and Mahabharat often they'll say that we don't have out and out evidence that it happened at this 5000 ish bc mark what's the mark for mahabharat uh, for them you mean no what, what's the mark you've okay, come that's to? like so mahabharat happened i'll give you the formula of 7 mahabharat happened more than 7000 years ago that's what the evidence shows uh, ramayana happened more than 14000 years ago and rigveda definitely more than 21000 years ago so think of the multiplication of 7 uh i'm thinking of a very weird thing in my head which i have to voice out But based on the dates that you've given, which is five five six one BC, that's the Mahabharat, and Ramayana is twelve thousand two hundred nine BC. Like think simplicity, you can say more than fourteen thousand years ago for Ramayana. Gotcha. Yeah. So we are seven thousand years away, roughly, from the Mahabharat, and Correct. the Mahabharat was seven thousand years away from the Ramayana, according to your dates. Yes. So we are as far from the Mahabharat as the Mahabharat was from the Ramayana. Yes. Do you think that's why the knowledge is coming to the forefront again? because is of it, the seven multiplication of seven yeah. could be could be i mean i'm not Myst- a numerologist yeah. but hey <laughs> mystical <laughs> cycle thought. of 7000 years cute thought good thought yes hmm. yeah you know i'll tell you one more thing i've learned through the show which is that uh, when krishna passed away at the end of the story of the whole epic hmm. they say it was the beginning of the kalyug uh, and the mahabharat happened in the dwapar yug the ramayan happened in the treta yug Now again, if we go back to this timeline that I just mentioned, yeah, effectively, does it mean that uh, the time difference between each of the yugs is seven thousand years? One may reach that conclusion. Uh, I would say I will give you a brief on the yuga, but uh, that may require a full episode. That's how fascinating it is. Yuga, in the Indian context, the simple definition, if you look at the time, is a period of time. that's the simple definition a certain period of time like you know it's like saying bring me a cup of tea but the cup size may change something like this so you guys a certain period of time uh, there is one um, researcher on uh, in odisha he is a retired ips officer arun upadhyay ji he has collected 26 plus different definitions of a yuga to that i have added 10 plus so possibly the number sits said this but to simplify the matter i would say yuga is not even the period of time okay there is a sense of it i'll give you a quick uh, sure. uh, you know the niles notes on that <laughs> clips notes okay four types for example in aitareya brahman 
okay this is based on your action the you guys define it i will just instead of sanskrit i will just go english straight what is aitareya brahman uh aitareya brahman will go now say think of vedas the veda has a samvita which is the mantra after that when the mantras are used in a yajna there are some other manuals like how to do the yajna okay so car you know how to drive a car but how to maintain the car how to start the car check the car so that is the brahmana grantha nothing to do with the word brahman otherwise or something like this then there is a aranyakas which is a philosophical discussions on those mantras and the yajna and then there is a upanishad which is essentially guru teaching that same philosophy and everything else to shishya so like that mm-hmm. so one of the brahmana grantha aitareya brahman connected to rugved it says when you are sleeping you are in a kali yuga mm-hmm. when you wake up and sit sit up then you are in a dwapar when you stand up you are in a treta and when you get into action and you start walking that is you are in the satya yuga mm-hmm. krutya yuga it says charayeti 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 keep on walking keep on doing action stay in the satya yuga stay in the krutya yuga now this is nothing to do with the time this has to do with the action okay so let's look at another one the emotional state like einstein's you would have heard like you know you sit with a beautiful lady for a hour and it feels like a minute and you sit on a hot plate for a minute and feels like an hour by the way do you know that einstein actually performed that experiment so that will be a digression so i'll not go there 1938 after doing this experiment he wrote a paper he borrowed charlie chaplin's wife for the date <laughs> and he traveled from new jersey to new york in oyster bar sat there and when he felt like looked at the clock 57 minutes and he felt like with uh, charlie chaplin's beautiful wife he felt like it was only a minute then he went to new jersey performed the other experiment sitting on a hot plate anyways so exactly like this in the bengal there was a great saint you might have heard the name chaitanya mahaprabhu like hari krishna movement f- sort of comes from that he wrote only eight shloka one of the shloka he says because he was a great krishna bhakta radha and krishna bhakta he says yugayitam nimeshena so the word yugayitam nimeshena chakshusha pravrushayitam shunyaditam jagat sarvam govinda virahena me if i have a separation from govinda my ishta devata nimesha just a blinking of an eye that time feels like a yuga so he is stating a emotional state just like einstein's uh, theory there this is a second kind the third kind is what people have confused for the fourth kind the third kind is like uh, you have heard 432000 years of kali yuga have you heard that yeah. double that is like a dwapar 864000 triple that is a treta and then four times that that has absolutely nothing nada to do with the chronological yugas of ramayana mahabharata and so on that has everything to do with a mathematical competition formulations in astronomy that allows us to tell us the absolutely precise and accurate orbital periods of planets mm. but somewhere that confusion happened and it was used and understood to be the durations of yuga and that's why you are comfortable when only 7000 years i'll come to that in answering that the third one is basically there is a yuga of a five years okay in the calendrical yuga the panchanga yuga and then that was used along with the astronomy evidence of the type i i i refer to to talk about the time periods okay now to answer that question so you said seven it seems like 7000 years and the yuga is changing possibly so but mahabharat gives a beautiful definition uh if you uh, remember recently our prime minister modi ji he referred to kal chakra badal raha hai if you have heard that statement in the context of ayodhya mandir and so you know what it is actually how do you change the kal chakra we do it and mahabharat says raja kalasya karanam a king or a administrator depending on how he administers the kingdom the particular type of yuga comes and ram i will not belabor on that point but mahabharat mm. goes on giving many examples of this mm. so depending on the administration a time comes and i add my original contribution just like raja kalasya karanam i say praja kalasya karanam mm. praja has to develop the civic sense also and a different type of yuga comes okay uh what would you like to say about that 7000 year duration it's very magical okay i find it very useful in the sense of mnemonics but 
just the way I look at things, uh, although it's a fascinating numerology thing, I don't read more into it. Okay, fair. Um, let's talk a little bit more about the reality of the Mahabharata. The one thing I've always questioned, even as a kid, was what were Rakshasas? Hmm. When you talk about Hidimba, yeah. Ghatotkach, yeah. Bakasur, uh, effectively, if you truly try uh, attaching it to reality, was Bakasur some kind of a cannibal? Hmm. Like just a really well built cannibal. Was uh, Hidimba and Hidimba also something similar? And then, if that's the case, why do we have a Hidimba temple in Himachal Pradesh? Hmm. Hmm. Where they say that, oh, this is actually where she lived near Khir Ganga. Which is now known for stoners who mm. <laughs> go up to trek to Khir Ganga. Right. But there is a Hidimba temple there. Yeah. Um, that's one question. Second question attached to that is this is something very, very fascinating. I learned from a Parsi priest who was on the show. Mm. What he spoke about was that Zoroastrians are also an ancient culture yeah. and I've really deep dived into Zoroastrianism, which is the religion of the Parsis. I figured that it's perhaps definitely the sister religion of Sanatanda. I'm pretty convinced. I agree. Uh, even when you talk about the modern um, practices, it's literally in parallel with Sanatanda. Be it worshipping fire, be it mantras, be it avastha, how we have Sanskrit. Uh, now, in their mythology, the word Daiva was villainous. Yes. In our mythology, the word Asura was villainous. Yeah. Mm. Cuter fact, uh, in their mythology, Ahura is noble. Hmm. Like it is uh, the name of the angels. Yeah. Mm. And they pronounce Sir as her. We have Somras, they have Homras. Yes. So their Ahura, is it our Asura? And their Daiva, is it our Dev? Correct. Now, if again, we try so, attaching uh, these pieces of culture to reality, perhaps we were two warring tribes and um, in our epics, the Asuras are painted sort of as villainous. But if you actually study the Vishnu Puran, if you actually study the Ramayana, there are some slightly heroic Asuras as well. So mm -hmm. it's not like you're painting all of them as negative. You're painting most of them as negative with some exceptions. And I'm a hundred percent sure that they would say the same about Daiva and Deva. Yeah. Uh, also, they were based out of Central Asia, Iran, Uzbekistan, all these places. Uh, now, was that what we count as Patal Lok in our hmm. uh, culture? There is, uh, a, there is a name for that land, uh, not Patal. Patal would be South America. Okay. Uh, in more this, interesting. this one is a Uttara Kuru. Okay. And oh, Uttara no. Kuru was known from this, uh, we can talk about like a Ramayana times because there is a reference to Kuru jungle mm -hmm. in a Ramayana, mm -hmm. which is like a Haryana area. But the Kurus were known, Uttara Kuru was known to Ramayana. So 14,000 years ago also Uttara Kuru existed, which is Iran. Think of Northern Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, mm -hmm. that area, the east of a Caspian Sea. 2000 years ago, uh, the Greeks uh, Greeks also refer to that land. Do you know how? Uttarakoro. Mm. Basically Uttarakoro. Okay. But let me, I mean, that may take another episode, but let's come back to this. Actually, I studied just like what you said, um, what you studied, uh, the Persian for a long time. Uh, my study started with uh, Lokmanya Bal Gangadhar Turk, who wrote a book, you know, the Orion and then the Arctic home in the Vedas going back to 140, 150 years. By the way, he is the Adya Archaea astronomer in the world, not just India. Astronomy, using astronomy in a way to understand our history in the modern times was started by Lokmanya Bhargangadhar Tirak. Okay. So uh, the references that you said to, and I would ask you a question, did your guest, the Parsi guest uh, uh, mention how far in the back in antiquity they refer to Zoroastrian religion? Yeah. Uh, because I will say, uh, if you want to say the number, that's great. If you remember how far back he wanted to go. It went roughly to what you're talking about as the Ramayan. Time great, period. great. Because in Mahabharata, there is an indirect reference to Narad Muni coming to Yudhishthir. And Narad Muni think of this as the journalist. Hmm. But journalist with the integrity. Okay. So 
there is a reference to Narad Muni coming to Yudhishthir and referring to a certain practice with the fire worship and all of this mm. in a somewhat distant land, but not that far distant land. And as a very mysterious, interesting practice in about 7000 years ago. Mm. Okay, no, But there are now. enough references. In fact, there is this reference to Atharva Veda. They are the followers of Atharva Veda. That is what is known. But something else, Asura, actually, if you look at into the Rugved, Asura is actually very much eulogized, you know, very much praised. It's not seen in the negative way at all. Indra is called Asura, which is mm. the highest deity there, you know. So that's now Varuna is called Asura. Mm. Over time, this is what happens. Why now we may say Rakshas as a bad person? Rakshas, the Sanskrit uh, basis for this, there can be many meanings. That's the beauty of a Akshara. Shabda can have many meanings in the context, but Akshara, which is just a letter, can also have many meanings. When you combine, it becomes different meanings. A rakshasa is Rakshamiti Rakshasa, the one who protects. Mm. But think of it, one who protects, this means he has to be powerful or she has to be powerful mm -hmm. with the weapon knowledge and everything. Mm -hmm. Now, someone who is a powerful power corrupts and absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. Over a period of time, something counter can happen. Simple example is our Sikh brothers, not all of them, but Sikh, the origin of Sikh is into protecting Hinduism. But eventually when the Khalistan movement came into being, they were talking things against India or against Hindus and so on and so forth. So those who were meant to protect Hindus at some point for thousand different reasons, we'll not go into that, almost almost became enemy. That can happen. That's that's the reason of this. Now, so Ravana was a Rakshas, but Ravana is a in the disciplic succession, he is a son or a grandson, great grandson of a great sage, great Rishi. Mm. But person can turn around, you know, that can happen. Back to the uh, Hidimba and so on, so on, so forth. What are, who are they? Basically, they are human beings. I mean, just to simplify things, I would say maybe they were people from Africa okay. and they were having a connection. So somewhere looked at something, they were looked at as a different, slightly different things, different powers. I'm jokingly saying this, but actually there is a enough basis uh, with a Ravana, uh, Ravana, who has conquered the whole world, he had gone all the way to South America. Mm. I mean, in every direction. And he was, even India, he was controlling all the way to Himalayas and all the way to where we are sitting right now. Mm. That's why the, you know, his, his uh, generals were there into Nasik, where, from where actually eventually Shurpanaka incident happened and then Ravana snatched away Sita. So he was controlling the pockets. You know, in the old times, he was very powerful. So because of that, he has these relationships in the different parts of the world, you know, and then so intermarriages. So you can say inter transnational marriages across mm -hmm. the boundaries. So those, but they were human beings, very powerful human beings, very altruistic, very uh, virtuous human beings. My conjecture, and again, this is based on just hypothesis, perhaps slightly emotional hypothesis, because I love these epics, is that I think lifespans were longer than. Lifespans were directionally longer, but not some. Sometimes you hear uh, terms like, uh, say, Ram Bhagwan Ram, after he returned, ruled for eleven thousand years. Hmm. That is not to be taken literally. There is a statement that sometimes you know the formula helps you in the engineering. You substitute something, hmm. and you know kilo calories, calories like that. So there, the formula is aho ratra samvatsara. The, you know, the common sense should never be <laughs> left out, you know. So, Ahoratra Samatsara, which means in certain circumstances, you consider a reference to a year equal to the day and of course, vice versa. Gotcha. So, 11,000 can be divided into days and that will come to 30 years or something like this. Got it. So, not those extreme years, but to your point, absolutely valid. Uh, based on the calculations in the Mahabharat, we have to accept there is no other alternative to accept that Bhishmacharya was about 140 plus years old at the time of Mahabharat war and he fought for the first 10 days. That's almost impossible for us to believe. I don't mean out, folks out there. It's impossible for me to believe that. Yeah. But in there is books like Autobiography of a Yogi where they speak about detailed Kriya Yoga, which yeah. is a form of yoga that involves for lack of better words, your own energy channels or pran or chi like Chinese culture. Yes. They actually talk about how you can extend the biological life of your body. And there's multiple chapters on it. Not going to deep dive into that for the sake of a free flowing conversation. Yes. 
um so i would assume that life spans were longer yes health was generally better yeah but the human outcome of a longer life span is a longer time to build bigger kingdoms because effectively humans are tribal species yes mm. so effectively what you're saying is they were probably just physically much better human beings correct who may or may not have had some kind of mystical powers which is why they were uh initially perhaps kept for the protection of society they had goodness in them as well yeah. but sometimes power could corrupt correct and that's why the heroes of the epics like bhim like ram ji come in and take on rakshasas mm-hmm. and asuras mm-hmm. my question to you now is about the south america angle because it's come up on the show yeah. uh where is this south america angle written about in the texts okay no great question it's written in multiple places but when we are narrating something we have to start somewhere so let's take that point as the time of uh, king bali so in the dashavatar series the vaman you know the vaman avatar and bali mahabali or sometimes known as a bali uh, was a very virtuous king sort of in the southern part you can say you know southern part of our modern day india but it could be broad it could have influence over indonesia we just don't know that and he was so uh, powerful like abhyudaya he has made such a prosperity that almost the other side is envious of it other side meaning within indian mm-hmm. context i'm saying and then they go to vaman and says do something about it and i will not go into that story but to bring it back to the patal so the story goes like this and people should read it with all their previous spectacles removed you know like mm-hmm. with a very objective fashion they will get this it's there in bhagavat puran so uh, he subdues uh king bali vamana subdues king bali and we will not again go to the detail because i want to take you to patal and then uh, he is essentially kept in a house arrest mm-hmm. okay so he is given a freedom but he is kept in a house arrest because he has such a great influence on his uh, population so they cannot be just gotten rid of you know so to say and that house arrest based on my understanding was in indonesia where we caught call today the bali possibly mm-hmm. oof Hmm. now bhagavat puran and many other puranas go on to tell and even uh, some stray references come in mahabharat and ramayana also so this is this incident is long before 14000 years the stray reference comes where after some time uh, the restrictions on bali were removed we have the description of that but then bali did not return that's what it says he went further to patal Mm. now if you just take a straight line and the navigation you said speculated navigation actually we don't have to speculate the archaeology the dirt archaeology we have evidence of dirt archaeology of sophisticated ports in india like say tamil nadu pumpuhar going back to 20000 plus years mm. so that was there so now he went there now he went to patal that's all it says and then he established various colonies sutala atala tala atala rasatala and many uh, uh, colonies like that now if you take now then the sort of a narration breaks down because after that there is not much description the descriptions do come as how opulent and prosperous that land is and now that after the spaniards it's very hard to believe that that is the case but actually if you look at the their archaeological history and other history it is ext- i've been there many times you been a, to south america many many times i mean i speak broken spanish you know i mean enough to get around myself alone every country multiple times but you see for example peru they have 400 they not have now in the ancient times they developed 400 varieties of potatoes and they know which potato to plant at which height and so on if you look at the names you will find some fascinating things for example so bali did not return went further to patal now this is this is the relationship bali's great great grandfather is not an immediate father but it looks like as if he is a father grandfather no not really many generations in between he is a virochana virochana prallad if those are the names now the in south america there is a story that somebody came from uh, across the land across the ocean to civilize us mm-hmm. and do you know what is the name of that person virakocha mm-hmm. now wow. if you see the spelling it can be virochana literally virakocha and he civilized us that is what the belief there is so in the south america the incas but you come <coughs> further up to the mexico and uh, you know all that area 
they have a many stories like this another one the in the mexico they, there are these people are called aztecas you know i mean the you know aztecas now that has to do with the uh, agastya but also aztec the sages oh damn and think of the snakes like you know as a as a child forgive me the, as a child uh, when i grew up in konkan halfway between mumbai and goa and we used to see lots of snakes and you know our elders used to say maybe to get rid of our fear if you see a snake just say astik 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 three times and the snake will not do anything to you <laughs> usually snake doesn't do anything to you but that sage astik is connected with the nagas now nagas just like the rakshasas were human beings they are mentioned in the mahabharata very well that's how the new delhi the indraprastha was established by getting rid of the naga so to say by burning the khandava forest so the sage who was connected with the naga as a individuals we have so many names naga everywhere in the andhra pradesh if you go today and kerala by the way so those people also migrated there possibly with a bali and that's why you see all the symbolisms of the now chinese call it dragon because they took that route by the way you know going there and also the sea route but also through alaska and so this astecas the word is astecas again they refer to that person as a someone who came and civilized them but something more fascinating ramayan uh, is aware of that land mahabharat is aware of it but mahabharat actually less so but ramayana sugriv knows so much about that land i'll just give you an idea sugriva's atlas is my talk series so when uh, all the vanara parties who are also human beings by the way mm. jokingly i say the people of karnataka <laughs> because that's where the kishkinda capital was so four parties the vanara parties they are going in the four different directions and sugriva is giving them the landmarks just like go there and take a left mm. turn at a demart mm. we will say in modern times in mumbai he says go there you will find this so i'll just give you the east direction take you to the patal now he doesn't say patal he doesn't use the word patal but he says okay start there in the center of india then you will go to the land of silver that is the thailand area mm -hmm. then the yavadweep so ropya dweep yavadweep that is the land of yava the grains that is the java the java has come from yava then he <sighs> this keeps on describing many islands then he says after that Uh, you will uh, see the ocean that is possibly many oceans but the pacific once you cross this now this is when it gets extremely fascinating once you cross it you are going to come to the area of a uh, lord ananta ananta dev mm. and in that area to mark the flag of ananta just like arjuna has his own flag and bhima has his own flag that flag is inscribed into on the surface of the stone surface of the mountain and he describes how that mountain is i'm going to say this to you trishira kanchana sketu talastasya mahatmana sthapita parvatasya agre virajati sa vedika i will split it trishira like a trident trishira kanchana gold shining like a gold yellow color ketu like a pillar like a flag you know trishira kanchana sketu talas tasya mahatmana tal meaning like a pole like a structure like a you know palm tree something is there big structure uh, mahatmana uh, trishira kanchana sketu talas tasya mahatmana sthapita parvata sagre it is been established at the front of a mountain virajati sa vedika with the veda bhumi like a yajna bhumi like a rectangle is there at the bottom of it now why is this big deal just like that arundhati vasishta because today you can go to peru and on the west coast of course the coast is only on the west side you can near near the bay of paracas you can see a trident like structure it's known as a candelabra of andes and you can have that picture in front of you i have given many talks on it and you can have this ramayana verse next to you and you can see one is to one correspondence not even a single detail missing mm. now when spaniards came there they ask like where they saw the structure say did you do it so no we didn't do it the locals there he said what about your grandparents no it was always there they said it was always there so nobody the locals also don't know the memory possibly lost but ramayan not only describes the structure ramayan tells you in the next shloka 
हु मेड इट वाय इट वॉज मेड वेन इट वॉज मेड पूर्व से आदिशी निर्माण जस्ट लाइक वी हैव अ इंटरनेशनल डे लाइन दैट गोज थ्रू द पेसिफिक टू इस्टैब्लिश द एंड ऑफ अ ईस्ट डिरेक्शन जस्ट लाइक टूडे वी से जपैन समवेर वी हैव टू स्टार्ट इट राइट समवेर वी हैव टू एंड इट पूर्व से आदिशी निर्माण कृतंत्र त्रिदशेश्वरे इंद्र इंद्र इज द डीटी ऑफ द ईस्ट डिरेक्शन इंद्र इस्टैब्लिश इट देयर and when was it done it was done in a krita yuga that is to say long time before ramayana well the reference is in ramayana so it has to be before ramayana so that description comes no mention of patal but if you go to puranas you say which puranas almost all puranas but bhagavat purana is a good one vishnu purana is a good one ramayana is good one where uh, uh, ravana goes there like uh, shurpanaka is actually been married ravana's sister and has gone to south america kalakey or i forgot uh, his, uh, her husband's name actually so hold on let's pull it up correct, on the correct. screen this is a lot of data yes, and yes. i would actually like to see it what was the name of the mountain uh, is called candela bra c a n d l e bra like candle stand candela bra of andes this one mm. oh this is mm. a yeah. real thing yes it exists in the stone yeah Whoa. and and now if i see sing that again okay it's like a, a, almost 800 feet oh. tall mm. okay trishira trishira kanchana golden ketu talastasya mahatmana sthapita parvata sagre at the top of the mountain stone what We, the f- and just look at the bottom virajati savedika you see the rectangle at the bottom yeah like a yajna bhumi you know we call that vedika you know virajati sa vedika so the locals don't know how far back this dates correct it's lost knowledge they don't know who created they don't dis- know why it was created but it's described in the puranas ramayana Damn. And, and it's not like uh, ramayana is described somewhere and uh, we are somehow making the dots no starting with the india going in the east direction after going through thailand myanmar and indonesia then the uh, crossing the ocean and now you come at the land and this is where it is i wonder what the designs symbolize because it seems like it contains some meaning ha huh. uh, the trishul it's obvious yes. and again trishuls are not just related to shiva or mata it's an ancient part correct, of culture correct. it's even the weapon right think of it what do trishul signify because it's there in greek culture as well poseidons everywhere everywhere what what meaning does it have in akal jo i mean it's it's a weapon right it's a if very effective weapon like those people who have worked with the snakes they might know that the, you know the kamberu you know the word kamberu it goes mm-hmm. like this i mean i have killed many snakes <laughs> you killed snakes i have to right they come inside the house right during the rainy season but there is a certain way they it allows to hold so this one is like a, a three prong right so at least one of them will do the job right when you throw at someone uh, any uh, have you ever wondered about what those designs mean uh, no i haven't gone that far but, but would you mm. think it could mean something uh see what the description is it is the insignia of ananta but i'm going to give you one more surprise there mm-hmm. okay so the, the shlok comes there we can pull the shlok also if you want okay so go to valmiki ramayana.net that's a website yeah. valmiki ramayana whole valmiki ramayana is there okay let me just read out the yeah. english translation yeah. on that shalmali island in wine ocean you will be seeing the mansion of vinata's son hmm. named garuda hmm. the eagle vehicle of vishnu hmm. which is decorated with numerous jewels and which in sheen will be like mount kailash the abode of shiva hmm. this mansion is construction of vishwakarma the heavenly architect so the mansion was there archaeologists have not found it or it might have been destroyed you know but go to the next one now this uh, rakshasa begins okay tasya shaila nibhabhima mandeha nama rakshasa shaila shrungeshu lambante nana rupa bhayavah there are three types of vampire bats that are found in the fossils just let me give one more piece of Please. context here yeah we had amiga natha on the show who i felt was one of the premier experts on both ramayana and mahabharata and she constantly keeps highlighting valmiki's ramayana as the only ramayana that should be referenced when it comes to even storytelling and this is all based on valmiki's ramayana valmiki ramayana okay so this is as much proof as you can have as a sanatani yes now let's go on okay so uh, now you can read the translation yeah. for verse 41 therefore <laughs> no there yeah. about horrifying and merciless demons of various shapes and similar to mountains in size mm. called mandehas will be dangling upside down from mountain peaks <laughs> who is dangling upside down 
bats, bats mm. right now so sometime you know uh, the uh, i wouldn't say exaggeration but embellishments like mountain in size you know maybe it's like a mountain in fact their color is like a ash color like mm. a mountain stone color you know so not always mountain size they are not that big Mm. but uh, embellishment can happen now people may remember yeah. because of this or okay? perhaps i mean when we talk about megafauna there is they say that all the animals that we see around us only 1% of the animals that have e- ever existed which is very mm. true and they constantly talk about megafauna being prevalent in unexplored lands like australia has a lot of megafauna even today the big birds correct uh, the kangaroos are megafauna in correct. so many ways but uh, if you study zoology yeah. megafauna was extremely prevalent in australia and i'm <laughs> sure it was prevalent in south america because of galapagos islands also exactly i would agree and also the biggest extinction of them happen in 11000 BC after younger dryas yeah, around that time exactly uh, during the younger dryas beginning of a younger dryas damn possible yeah yeah and graham hancock talks about it but i have quaternary extinction a book this thick and it just goes on and on we can talk about the four tusk elephants but we'll come to that that are also described in ramayana mm. okay the first half of this episode i was just you know very active brain zone <laughs> right now my skin is acting i'm just getting goosebumps with like every sentence yeah but go let's on. complete this first okay on, then we'll on, come sir. to four tusk elephants okay so the, so you understand that although it is called rakshasa in reality it is a, vamp- a bat okay mm-hmm. now uh, uh, go down yeah ते पतन्ति जले नित्यम सूर्यस्य उदयनम प्रति व्हेन द मॉर्निंग हैपेंस दे गो अप देयर लुक एट द शैडो एंड कैच देयर प्रे यू नो यू कैन रीड इफ यू वांट Uh, the day after day day after day those demons will be falling in water when sun always burns them at sunrise mm-hmm. and when the impetus <coughs> of gayatri him fells them down yet they will be resurfacing and dangling on the mountain day after day seems a lot like some kind of giant bats huh. right okay yes now today with the remaining whatever we have remaining the mega fauna 99% being extinct but even with what we have right now we have three varieties of these bats vampire mm-hmm. bats in south america now we have watched too many vampire movies so we think vampire bats are everywhere around the world no most of them i mean they eat animals and insects and all uh, uh, and then fruits and what not but the vampire bats in the sense of blood sucking mm-hmm. bats in the whole world they are only available right now in south america okay so this is very solid evidence for that by the way okay now go down okay keep on going down we we'll skip slowly yeah, okay uh, just just let me read that okay so shweto rushabho nama parvata white rushab parvata this is referring to andes by the way you okay. talking about this 44b 44 first line yeah 44 first line you know in yeah for in the center of that milk ocean there is a white mountain of colossal size named okay. rishab hmm. surrounded with closely growing trees ever flowered with flowers of heavenly fragrance yeah and a lake mm-hmm. renowned as lake sudarshan yeah. is also there go to amazon go to bolivia peru beautiful You know. which is replete with silvery lotuses whose fibrils are golden in sparkle and which <coughs> kingly swans will be scampering about yeah well, now go to the next one like so skip 46 it's not that relevant okay uh, keep on going down i'll tell you yeah Damn, how oh. deep have you gone in this stuff so <laughs> well you <laughs> full stop but i wanted to show okay here uh, 51 okay uh, can you bring up yeah okay yeah. so st- stick there ah f- 52 and you know uh, you can read the whole translation but i'll read 52 sure now we are talking of andes mountain we are going to talk of the structure at in the verse 53 that i just read and we saw the candelabra of andes but just before that it is saying this structure that we saw is the insignia for the ananta which is verse 52 asinam parvatasya agre sarvabhuta namaskritam sahasra shirasam devam anantam neel vasasam anantam and sahasra shirsha is what all the peaks of andes that's what the analogy is okay they you shall see then o vanar the lotus the the lotus petal mm-hmm. broad eyed thousand hooded serpent god mm-hmm. in black clothing mm-hmm. the lotus petal broad eyed thousand hooded serpent god in black clothing named ananta sitting on top of that mountain hmm. that's what the symbol was mm-hmm. and sustaining the earth on his head 
who will be like moon in his brilliance and whom all beings hold in reverence they all will have a meaning will ignore it for the you know sure. for brevity I, i think it's describing the symbol for for brevity but something else i want to tell sure. you so the next one is the insignia is given which mm. we already discussed mm. but now what i want you to do is go to search function so remember ananta okay ananta is referred to the andes mountain mm. with its sahasra heads as the each peak right now go to search and type mount ananta in andes okay so it will come like a cerro oh, okay so yeah yes now story is very similar to this uh, uh, candela bra of andy now what can happen the western world came in contact with south america in the recent times only 500 years ago so two possibilities either somebody from spain or western europe who has studied ramayan very well or indian literature has been fascinated with the name ananta went to south america and one of the peak he gave the name ananta that's one possibility mm. what is the other possibility mm. we have a description next to the trident in valmiki ramayana that name was there from the beginning and i have gone through the searching for it by the way let me give the credit where it is due one of the person mitra desai that i mentioned who is in australia and she has written a novelette called flag of ananta based on this research and she discovered this mount ananta mm. not my discovery but it is there in valmiki ramayana <laughs> descriptions about south america name you know we don't have to do a guess work and if you look at it like you know the, if you say okay who gave the name like which spaniard gave the name you come across saying uh, this is a, a native uh, indian language indian meaning those indians there quechua or uh, ayamara those are the languages it comes from there bottom line nobody knows hmm well ramayana knows <laughs> dear archaeologists <laughs> <laughs> I mean see this is where a lot of people get stumped. I'm talking about academia right uh, in specific yes where they don't have responses to this. Um they will call it coincidence. Mm. But how many coincidences do you need? For example Aurora Borealis will not do that that will be a another separate episode Sugriva's atlas if we do it. Sugriva in summary knew when he is asking vanara parties to go in four different directions and he is giving them landmarks like this this is only in the east direction he gives the landmarks in the north direction kailash and everything going further the plantation of the bamboos and everything and you can can, can we talk a little bit about this sure uh very interesting yeah um what has he spoken about in the north in the north he says start with the center of india always you know start from like a gateway of india type of thing you know center of india you go further now he is going across the sort of a tibet uh, slash tibet you know where how we people do kailash yatra these days he says you will come to the kailash area he describes kailash area not a surprise people may easily know that but he describes it he says a beautiful land cooler temperatures no trees and you can go and check it even now kind of thing after that he says the land of many rivers which is if you consider which land is that that is the 40 latitude today like the uh, western part of china today's china and then turkmenistan and kazakhstan that area that is called uttara kuru and uttara madra in our literature so we say where it is it's there in mahabharat is there in ramayan and it is there in the puranas okay after that now this is remember this is the description from 14000 years ago today you can go just fine until the arctic sea at least in the summer but sugriv 14000 years ago he is saying and i am putting the 40 latitude just to make a point he says beyond uttara kuru and uttara madra there is a land sugriv beautifully describes what it is but he tells the vanara party do not dare go there if you go there you will first thing it's very hard to go he describes arctic sea all the way uttara samudra uttaram payasam nidhi that's how he describes the arctic sea but if you go there you will find it impossible to come it back now why is that because the ice age is taking place there people think ice age meaning the whole earth was covered that was not the case in last million years 
but the whole entire europe especially northern europe and northern uh, america they were covered with ice so he's saying don't go there there's like a permafrost and tundra like conditions we we know that from the climatology study so he says don't go there so that's in the north direction he describes aurora borealis you know what that is northern lights yeah so he says even when it's a dark land when this even when the sun is not there but the place is so bright is beautiful mm. okay aurora borealis possibly is referring to mahabharat also describes when arjuna goes there now if you go to the south he in the southern direction of course the lanka you know but further he is describing the land all the way to antarctica now in in the modern uh, description antarctica was found only in the 18th century if you see the maps before 18th century the western uh, maps the antarctica is like left empty now there are some maps in italy for example and turkey who actually show the land mass there those are from 15th century what does that tell you and this is guy piri reis i don't know if that came into any of this thing piri reis was a turkish uh, uh, na- navy man like admiral 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 or something and he says he created this world map based on this is 15th century 16th century so columbus maps also he used but then he says he used the maps of the arab land he used the ancient maps of hind and he created and if you see that he is showing antarctica like a land with exact mapping that you can match with antarctica the map was created in 15th century but history books and academy will teach you that antarctica was discovered by europeans in 18th century 17 something because the winners of war always rewrite mm. history books yeah because discovery has a very different meaning in the west discovery meaning under the dictates under the permission of the christian church the pope you find certain land it doesn't matter uh, whose it belongs to you basically mm. grab it church has given you the right to grab it for yourself whoever discovers it meaning literally sees it so vasco da gama discovered us it doesn't matter <laughs> what rights we have what we want to him it was like the india is for him to explore and exploit and that's what he did to the best of his ability and then the british did the same thing so the the inside their psyche it is there for that we can blame them you know not the blame the current uh, you but know the residents. issue is also that modern academia still completely blindly looks at that system as gospel Uh, so many ways yes because see academia is a say i gave a definition of nasim nicholas talib you know see it is a regimented thing that they want to stay there it's a regimented thing like yeah. you know, which is why countries have uh, straight borders now so that conflict remains in these countries we remain third world mm-hmm. uh why has kashmir been divided in this way correct so that we would be at war for hundreds of years and both countries would suffer exactly and be engaged with each other yeah same thing they did in africa yeah right it's it's a century long geopolitical ploy that's actually still working right it is as a lot about True. how human society can work also True. uh anyway that we're yeah. drifting away now since i have gone three direction let me take a minute and do the west direction yeah sure so going from india again central india saurashtra and going through modern day pakistan afghanistan iran iraq turkey syria romania Sugriva is describing all these lands with a chain of mountains, range of mountains. That's what it is. If you look at the geographical map of the world, that's what you will find. He describes all the way up to the Alps, and he says beyond. He calls it Astagiri. By the way, uh, to um, uh, Andes, he calls it Udayachala Mountain. You know, and then to Andes, uh, sorry, to uh, Alps, he's calling it Astagiri. So Sugriva, in effect, just to summarize, knew. 14000 years ago from andes to alps and from arctic sea to antarctica sab kuch mentioned hmm. what is asta giri is mountain asta is a set sun setting set yeah. setting sunset of a sun yeah. U- udaya ah, asta okay yeah okay. rising the and mountains set. with the sunsets sunset from the point of view of india if you think mm. of it sure. with the india in between sure yeah. uh in the same way that he's described bats in south america has he described other megafauna people in other lands people especially in the indonesia and papua new guinea that area oh beautiful descriptions i mean you can we can go for hours beautiful description like you know he describes um the folks whose ears and now you can see that in africa mm. today 
ears have come mm. down to like you know to their waist or something or the lips coming down which you see in africa body modification seen? yeah body modifications yeah like this and in indonesia proper uh, also in the papua new guinea you actually see people putting all kinds of paraphernalia just like a feathers and mm-hmm. decorating themselves and so on and those descriptions those descriptions comes come there okay. yeah anything else about megafauna mm, uh, Uh, mega fauna not much at least not that i recall right now okay. yeah. the question that's popping up in my head is the whole hanuman ji jumping across the ocean yeah. and then meeting an asur on the way to lanka yeah and then slaying that asur yeah uh my yeah so my uh, on the way to lanka right yeah. my co researcher uh, again amazing researcher rupa bhati she bhati ji she is out of uh, gujarat Uh, she's an architect by profession but this is what we do <laughs> engineer and then do something uh, she has uh, her interpretation of it is that uh, as hanuman was going to lanka and not to sri lanka by the way that will be open another box so i won't do that right we now we will be doing that <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's referring to actually going think of this as going east of maldives that's where ravana's lanka was right now there is nothing just a deep ocean okay. west of maldives uh, east of maldives because uh, oh, okay, the okay. zero prime meridian understood uh, that goes through kurukshetra sthaneshwar ujjain watapi and lanka lanka is zero zero mm. Mm. zero longitude zero latitude sure. kind of thing you know right on the equator so that's where we have to go maldives we have to just go east of maldives right now there is a deep ocean with a geological anomaly again we won't open that box right now it won't tell us much other than something funny happened there what do you mean something funny happened uh, the, the earth crust there below the ocean is one of the thinnest and we don't know why that happened but it's just a one of the geological anomaly you know so that's something to be noted down for maybe for future research why do geologists believe that it's thin they don't know that's why it's an anomaly and sort of a mystery and you know research what if you dig through uh <laughs> it will be interesting thing to do a geologist on the show to yeah <laughs> that's right about that. that's right so effectively what you're saying is either there was an island there that got submerged yeah or it even possibly again rupa bhati ji has done great research uh, many similar things or because of uh, say and i'm going to come to that question that you ask about hanuman meeting running into these uh, individual creatures uh, very volcanically possibly very active mm. area then and there are evidences evidence that going back to only 2 centuries 3 centuries it has happened in indonesia a small island with a active volcano broke into pieces mm-hmm. so actually when it broke it split it moved mm-hmm. on the surface of the ocean so to say literally the you know islands became separated from each other something might have happened and then it would have disappeared and maldives and the whole lakshadweep could be pieces of mm-hmm. that you know i mean that's all speculation for if now if it exploded it would have gone in the east direction also and perhaps joined that whole papua new guinea that's too far that's okay. too far right where we are looking at you know from papua new guinea or indonesia would be too far but this so this is a possibility what uh, do you think that the modern island of sri lanka was not a part of the ancient ramayan uh, the, the, no it would be part of ancient ramayan it wasn't ravana's mm. lanka and there is a sufficient evidence for that for example sri lanka i don't know if you know this but the name sri lanka was given in 1972 now what happens is Uh, see for example the land of sri lanka could be part of ravana's kingdom for mm. all it matters we don't know that india majority of india was part of ravana's kingdom you know like a whole maharashtra was a part of ravana's kingdom mm. based on this description but uh, what we know is that uh, even recent histories like going back to only 1000 years when people are writing and our puranas many times they will say uh, like person living from their lanka then going to this island then going to this island in the list they will refer to simvala dweep which is the old name of sri lanka simvala dweep because simvala is moved there i mean the sinhalese they call sinhalese right correct right so that is a very recent i'm talking last 1000 years but my point is even in the last 1000 years they are referring to lanka as a separate place from sinhala dweep mm. so effectively here yeah you are disagreeing with extreme right wing portals which highlight the ram setu as one of the most important correct 
parts of yes. Ramayan history. You're not refuting the Ramayan. Hundred uh, percent correct, but you're trying to look at it from a more evidence-based geographical yeah. perspective. Yeah, that the island of Sri Lanka is not Ravan's Lanka that correct. we hear about in Ramayana. Right, but Ravan's Lanka was possibly an island that was accompanied with a lot of volcanic activity. Yeah, that perhaps got submerged, just like that Atlantis story that we've heard about. Yes. and i remember reading this report way back this is when i was a teenager and websites used to be very popular yeah. in in the mid 2000s someone had written an article about how atlantis possibly could be lanka it doesn't need to be actually uh, again if you have to go there we have to pull another graph and go for know, it. okay go for it um, uh, okay go to google uh, do uh, paul blanchon okay so yeah the same guy by the way he did his phd in the same university where i was doing my masters in canada you know uh, amazing amazing individual now what we need is one of his paper okay reef drowning during the last glaciation hold on just just give me a second what uh, what year is that um, 1995 J- uh, 1995 perfect click on that yeah we and yeah. you are going to be fascinated i'm going to show you three atlantis Damn. one is ravana's lanka second one is the plato's atlantis third one is krishna's oh. dwarka right on one chart if we find this okay reef drowning during the mm-hmm. last deglaciation so, yes evidence for catastrophic Rise sea level it. rise yeah. and ice sheet mm-hmm. collapse this yeah. is the global warming that happened in that phase uh, and by the way the global warming we see today is accelerated because of pollution Correct. but it is also an act of nature taking away nothing from the reality of global warming it's a massive problem environmentally speaking Correct. today Correct. but the earth goes through cycles of cooling and warming up yeah. which is why we see ice ages in the first place yeah. and deglaciation Correct. which is what he's talking about the question i have for you is was this nature based or was it because of some catastrophic event like a meteor strike uh no it doesn't ha- no it's not a meteor st- uh, meteor strike it is that global warming that has began in the last 20000 years again it's not some global warming the first mm-hmm. time no uh, the whole cycles based on astronomy right. as well that's going on right so last 20000 years ago why do we say that because that was the lgm last glacial maximum, maximum. and since then water sea levels are rising okay so the sea levels are rising very smoothly but they are interrupted by these cre catastrophic mm. rise event so otherwise is going like this but it's like this mm. okay so these are the three as in temperatures warm up gradually according to the natural course of things correct but sometimes <laughs> events happen because of which suddenly the temperature will increase Sim- yeah, yeah simple example would be say th- there's a block of ice sitting mm. and it's slowly melting Mm. but a point comes when it cracks and a big block falls down ah uh, okay gotcha something like that so On- suddenly that's going to create a waves into the water and then the just that block of ice breaking down will create a lot of weather changes it'll recreate maps changes the water levels water levels migrations of people loss of life and everything that people are afraid that global warming will cause in the 2030s and 40s could happen in one shot Absolutely. if nature wills it like it happened back then catastrophic uh, hence the name geologically speaking can this happen randomly even now yes that's what people fear yes the environmentally conscious people fear this exactly correct and see environmentally we should be cautious irrespective of this global warming and Cooling sea levels years. rising mm. because we need a clean earth yeah and earth is dying you know yep. in many ways but in terms of uh, the sea level rise we may be close to how high it gets Okay that is not to say be very comfortable in Mumbai and Los Angeles in New York no we should worry like it's going to get worse like it might get worse before it gets better mm. but we are almost if you look at the 100000 years of record we are almost there in terms of the highest sea level right possibly um sorry yeah, yeah. i'm not letting you continue again this is for better understanding we yeah. had a meteorologist please, please, yesterday please yes uh he's one of the most reputed ones in the world Uh, his name is Dr. Jagdish Shukla, and uh, he's contributed a lot to uh, the Indian climate change mm-hmm. movement, etc. Yeah. Uh, and he's contributed a lot to even uh, the Indian science scene. Anyway, not getting into that, yeah. uh, he spoke about how the way we're going right now, uh, if we don't stop polluting the earth yeah. and using uh, fossil fuels, then by 2030 we're going to do irreversible damage to the earth. So we only have six years left. Uh, until we actually see 
perhaps a bit of an apocalyptic yeah situation only 6 years that wouldn't surprise me i would say uh, similar predictions has come in the past and that's not to discount what he's saying actually i'm so glad he's saying this but the human nature is such that humans will not understand many of them have no luxury to understand with their daily Yeah. Uh, survival things so it is for people who have a luxury of thinking like this to do something about it but what will happen is the earth is also extremely vibrant extremely vibrant and it is uh, capable of reversing itself mm. but that's not to discount his point actually i don't know if it's a 6 years because similar predictions i have even heard in 1990s and we are still around but maybe not as healthy as we are we ought to be or things like that yeah. so so it is happening i mean the oceans are dying in a certain way you know the sea life is going away uh, with the organic fertilizers the uh, land uh, is getting very very bad uh, so like sadguru ji's movement for uh, soil save reach soil. save soil this is these are all very good initiatives okay. now let's carry okay on. we are talking uh, ravana's lanka right now sure but where is the dirt archaeology evidence this is dirt archaeology evidence you see for example that vertical line this mm. is basically so x axis is the time mm. y axis is the uh, rise in the sea level gotcha okay now uh, you see the uh, the vertical line where you see it okay the most vertical line that you see there in the, As in the vertical rise vertical rise correct yeah. if you draw a straight vertical line above there it is going to hit at 5525 i mean maybe you can find 5525 and just draw a line mahabharata text says that krishna's dwarka was flooded and destroyed by gushing sea waters 36 years after the mahabharata war 5561 Plus thirty six, we have to do minus thirty six because of BC five five two five BC. In the middle of sixth millennium BCE, which is fifty five twenty five BCE, fifty five hundred BCE, there was a. This is Arabian Sea data. Dwarka is on the Arabian Sea, west coast of India. Sudden sea level rise. Listen to this of fifteen meters. Imagine fifteen meters happen in Mumbai. Forget fifteen meters. Three meters would be disastrous. 15 meters sudden sea level rise in the middle of 6 millennium bc in the arabian sea that's krishna's dwarka getting destroyed 2 mm-hmm. meters is about a 6 foot 5 or 6 foot 6 6 guy. feet simple 6 feet yeah and you're saying 15 meters so 50 50 feet 7 times that much 7 6 and a half foot guys kept one above the other yes. that's how much sea levels rose yes all over the world mm mm-hmm. that's the interesting part we can go around the world if you like but this one is only the arabian sea which is has a direct connection with the krishna's dwarka i wonder why keeping physics in mind it wasn't all over the world ha ah, great point big uh, actually a brilliant question and i'm not doing this to praise you <laughs> i'll still take it <laughs> <laughs> the brilliant question do you know why because there is a phenomenon called subsidence or subsidence whereas because water is a liquid you would imagine that around the world they are all connected and in a in a equilibrium state they should attain the same height yeah true but the local land mass with respect to the ocean level is also changes okay god because land can be shaped differently locally right because right. these are the tectonic plates different right. tectonic plates right. so and s- some pieces of land might block out the water like a dam correct correct and actually land Watch goes it. down that is happen in dholavira in gujarat the mm. land has come up mm. in in our times so the ocean is no longer there in dholavira two reasons actually water level is coming up so why the water went away from dholavira mm. because the uh, land has risen Mm. there but so so this is dwarka krishna's dwarka what what sir is effectively saying is the crust of the earth is not like an egg shell it's like a combination of different pieces of earth that go all around float around but also go up and down correct correct mm. and then there are many other sub phenomena like we call it this is a tectonic like the tectonic land but there is something called earth crust displacement also earth crust displacement like a orange uh, skin moving over the core of the orange without moving the core of the orange wow. that's another phenomenon something else depending on the quality of the clay and everything what sinks what comes up in a individual area changes you know it's a very complex phenomenon okay, okay. Um, now remember 
द टाइम ऑफ रामायण देर इज नो रिटर्न एविडेंस बट इन द ट्रेडिशन ऑफ इंडिया केरला आई हैव सीन फ्रॉम केरला नॉवेलिस्ट Actually, he used my dating and wrote a novel. I mean, he wrote his novel used my dating of twelve thousand two hundred nine. Okay, Trivin Nair. Okay, um, so twelve thousand. Now remember that K A is like a thousand years before today. Before okay. today. So to For, get to fourteen point two K is fourteen thousand two hundred years. Is it twelve point two? Gotcha. Like twelve point two BC, twelve thousand two hundred nine, exactly that time. Mm. Now remember, because it's a scientific thing, it always has a standard error of plus minus hundred and fifty years and so on. So around that area, you see what is happening. Uh, so x axis is time, y axis is the sea level rise. So we have to start from here, from the right, twenty thousand years ago. and we are coming towards the left as our today's time right okay right. so slowly water level is rising but at 14.2 which is ramayana times suddenly there is a sea level rise of 13.5 meters and then plus minus whatever it is which is probably what sank original lanka ravana's lanka now this wow. is a speculation in the sense there is no explicit reference to the destruction of ravana's lanka but if you come to mahabharat there is no clear description of Ravana's Lanka. Whereas in Ramayan times, Rama is going there. Mm. In uh, Mahabharat times, um, Sardev calls uh, Bhima's son um, Gatotkach and says, "Please go on my behalf to uh, Vibhishan and just get his permission." When they are doing the Rajasya Yajna, mm. so this is called. Uh, there is another field. I mean, our academics should know that called hagiography, or sort of think of it as a fill in the blanks. when all the information is not there still somebody is going to ask what happened to ravana's lanka during the mahabharata times so the narrator has filled it with this but here quickly yeah so that is that uh, uh, possibly the loss of ravana's lanka that 14.2 event cre1 right. right now do you remember when atlantis was gone if you listen to plato plato in his time he said that happened 9000 years ago now plato's time is 2000 years ago which means 9000 bc is what we need to go to 9000 years ago before plato is 11000 years ago from today mm. look at the cre2 11.5 event damn huh? that's atlantis this is somewhere between the time period of ramayana and mahabharata between ramayana and mahabharata has anything like this been spoken that's, about that's that's the think of that that's the end of younger dryas right that's the massive uh, meteor strike that happened not all of these jumps are meteor strikes uh but yeah that one is yeah and yeah, i can explain i mean i would not do that today i can explain based on paul blanchon's research and some of the other research that i have done on this um what caused this but it's a very complex phenomenon it's like a geology going deep down 200 levels okay okay so, we'll so not it's it's not as simple as a meteor strike uh, no no meteor strike for cre2 possibly but what caused cre1 and what caused cre3 see the if, for us on the map it looks the same but the causes are very different just as example Understood. the causes for cre1 cre2 are driven from the northern point uh, northern hemisphere like uh, ice melting in north america and western europe mm. the last one is caused by antarctica cre3 Three. yes which is the dwarka one dwarka one Okay, so I mean that that has to do with understanding dynamics at a different level. That's not a subject today. Not why, but now the CRE three. Look at the timing: seven point six ka subtract two thousand. That's five point six fifty six hundred BCE plus minus one hundred and thirty years. That's the standard error there. So anywhere in that time and fifty six hundred BC plus minus one hundred and thirty years, fifty five twenty five falls right there. <laughs> and so so you ask me the question is the sea level rise the same everywhere the answer is no this is in barbados this is in west uh, west indies caribbean so there the dynamics of the land and sea is different than what is what, what, what is in barbados uh, th this d data is from barbados oh gotcha from west indies got it as in so so the, there the graph. there like in in uh, arabian sea i showed you 15 meter rise there it is only 6.5 meter rise exactly same time got it got it so there is an effect all over the globe it's just different in different mm. parts 30 i have done research shown 30 different places around the globe for 5525 bc decisive 
no ifs no buts evidence for yeah. flooding and destruction of krishna's dwarka this is real archaeology and the real work of a real historian and a dirt archaeology yeah. that's why i said i have nothing against archaeologists in fact i am archaeologist how can i be against myself Again, the three steps. The first step is great. Second step, dating is great. The third step, when they connect the dots, they don't even go that far because in their subjective mind, they meaning not just archaeologists, people in general, those who don't believe in deep antiquity for human civilization, they say, how how is something possible uh, from a human perspective happening seven thousand years ago? We were monkeys. Well, that is their problem. Their premise is wrong. therefore they don't even think of going that far mm. in fact the beauty of ramayan mahabharat is once we astronomically figured this out therefore i am looking for what caused the destruction of ravana's lanka and atlantis and krishna's dwarka otherwise why would you even go and look at this graph that will be a waste of time to somebody who does not believe any great human civilization was happening more than 5000 years ago the person will not even look here um we had a member of the marcos which is the commando unit of the indian navy on the show <coughs> whose job was to actually dive and explore dwarka and uh, he didn't reveal a lot on the podcast we actually didn't end up releasing the podcast <coughs> because he revealed very less on the show <coughs> uh, and i felt like it wasn't good enough for an episode by itself yeah. but he was convinced that he was actually exploring the dwarka of that age yeah and he's a scuba diver so i asked him did you go inside the structure he said it's extremely dangerous to go inside that city structure Correct. because uh, it under the ocean it degrades and almost becomes sand yes. so you can get buried in that yeah. uh, sand Debris. cave yeah. uh, but when you touch it it can actually disintegrate and all hmm. so he's like we categorically told not to explore it too much right uh, but i think that's as far as the dwarka explorations have gone yeah right yeah and i know that graham Han- hancock himself also keeps coming to india to explore dwarka and tamil nadu yes and by the way do you know that what graham hancock and uh, the geologist uh, glen mill uh, he's uh, from he's a canadian just like me i'm a canadian and american and indian by the way yes. so uh, i have communicated with uh, uh, glen mill a lot on this geology data uh what he so graham hancock and glen mill when they s- researched dwarka and the time period they came up with do you know what that time period is 55 25 bc they show i mean if you see the graham hancock film on this underworld or whatever it is uh, the disappearance of a island on the west coast of gujarat that is dwarka and i agree with him completely uh, you know it's there in my research too it disappeared between Uh, that's seven thousand nine hundred and six thousand nine hundred BP, which is to basically say uh, our date falls fifty five twenty five falls right between. So then he moved on. It is too sad because if you would have stuck to it, now see this is the challenge. Okay, so for example, I don't know. I mean, Graham Hancock does so much more research. He's always exploring more fields, so he may not have a time. Uh, but it surprises me that he has done the research. and only if it takes the pain of just opening my book which many people have suggested to him i don't know why he has not opened that's like a bingo another reward for him for all the hard work that he has done for some reason he has not connected the dots i don't know why but whatever he claim for dwarka is what i have shown but from what from the all the archaeology data but also from the narrative data also from the astronomy data so literary the narrations the terrestrial and the celestial so this is a terrestrial evidence mm. this is a terrestrial and is happening in 30 different places you go to vietnam you find it black sea in turkey the formation of black sea uh, again maybe we will do another one on this separate dwarka krishna's dwarka is a episode by itself the formation of black sea uh, do you know when it was formed you can take a good guess now 5000 5525 BC now this is a very fascinating story that possibly your audience would love to hear so i have written my book first book when did the mahabharat war happen uh, the mystery of arundhati in 2011 and i'm working i'm full time working for a big corporation that time so i'm not talking much about it other than doing my research uh, fast forward to uh, 2015 or so i have written my second book also uh, the historic ram a prisoner from tennessee prison writes a email to me 
and he's been caught for some uh, pot or something which was uh, not uh, allowed at that time there uh, so he writes and he's writing something and i'm not exactly understanding what he's referring to but he says everyone is talking about the 6th millennium bc and now is this new guy he's referring to me oh he's also talking about something happening and i asked him because i was fascinated i responded to him says who else is talking about this so he sends me the name of the book and immediately i went and pulled that book from the library the book is written by two geologists from columbia university new york okay ryan and pitman and they have given some name like a noah's ark or finding noah's flood or something what they have shown is the creation of the black sea which is if you think of geographically um I don't know if you want to bring like the, like a geography of the Europe kind of thing. Uh, perfect, excellent, excellent, beautiful. So you have the Black Sea there, right? So you see the word Spain, Spain yeah. and Portugal. Just yeah. below that is that Gibra Gibraltar, Gibraltar area, yeah. yeah, Gibraltar area. That is the entrance to Mediterranean from Atlantic. Hmm. So now imagine, this is a global event. This fifty five twenty five BC Krishna's Dwarka is a global event yes. everywhere. Like yes. I show you the Mediterranean and hmm. and uh, Caribbean and all that. so the uh, sea level rising into atlantic the water is gushing into mediterranean from mediterranean think where the greece is hmm. that is the aegean sea hmm. you come further to the greece near that bulgaria or whatever return that is the sea of marmara hmm. and now if you want to expand just to the black sea so where the istanbul is written hmm. that is the sea of marmara on the south and the black sea is on the north hmm. there is that bosphorus channel basically yeah. so the all the force of the salt water broke through that bosphorus channel and the salty water started pouring to the north into now what is black sea but it was essentially a sweet water lake mm. coming from the uh, there and you know using nine different scientific parameters ryan and pitman from columbia university have shown that this event was a sudden event and it happened 55 25 bc mm. and the book book is out there so this prisoner from the tennessee prison sent me the information about this and i'm saying my god i'm researching this for like a 15 plus 20 years now and i did not know anything about this again the point i want to drive is unless i'm looking for evidence for 55 25 bc even if somebody presents it to me i will not see it mm. right so you should have a possibilities so if people in their subjective foolish judgment close their eyes and say nothing happened before 5000 bc right. even if there is a evidence they don't know what to do with it yeah yeah because a lot of their life's work and lectures and public talks will be proved slightly wrong if not entirely wrong yeah and the and the thing with that is in science actually see all the revolutions happen by proving the previous uh, theory wrong mm. and actually we should rejoice it Yeah. See, if somebody comes tomorrow and comes up with a year, which is different than fifty five sixty one B C, and can scientifically and logically prove that that is a better date than mine, I should be happy and yeah. not just somehow fight with that person. Now, what is very clear is that date I can tell you would not be any time after forty five hundred B C mm. because Arundhati Vasistha observation will not work. There is a Bhishma Nirvan. I wrote a whole book on that. which were only one and a half pages in my first book and i thought people will get goosebumps nobody got a goosebump in 2011 not by 2015 i said i need to write another book and now people get goosebumps when they read bishma nirvana because it's another piece of evidence from the mahabharata text do you know what it says actually arundhati vasishta gives you a time bracket like 10000 bc to 4500 bc as in the position of the stars arundhati and ha, vashishta only in between that observation is true what mm. is said in mahabharat mm. bishma nirvana evidence gives you like 5125 bc to 6722 bc a time period of 1500 years it says mahabharat war can only happen here based on the mahabharata text evidence gotcha one second yeah. i'll give you one high five for this <laughs> when i used to <laughs> See Graham Hancock and Randall Carlson's work. I always think there needs to be some Indian person who needs to go down and do the same kind of work, but from an India context. Honor of my life meeting you today. Just want to say that. Thank you. Thank you for <laughs> a lowdown. This was a lot of fun. That's what I'll say. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this real history special. That was only part one. Of an epic conversation with Nilayshok. Rarely has a guest stayed in my mind. 
a week or two after they've appeared on the show and I'm not exaggerating but this conversation with Nilay Shok has been ringing in my head every day since we've recorded with him my only request to you is that you share this episode as much as you can on WhatsApp i hope that this reaches the entire history fandom based community of bhartiya culture i hope that this reaches every indian if possible the one thing i do know is that this is one of those all time epic trs episodes that's going to be relevant even 10 to 15 years from now it's the age of podcasting in india but it's fueled because of the research and efforts of people like nilay shok we'll be back very soon with another stellar episode we've got an insane lineup coming up this month so keep supporting trs ranveer and the team we'll see you very very soon आज के पॉडकास्ट की बात की जाए तो भाई काफी डिफरेंट था हालांकि इससे पहले हम पॉडकास्ट देखते हैं ना तो उसमें हमें खाली इंडिया के बारे में इन्फॉर्मेशन जो है मिलती हाँ। थी ज्यादा या इंडियन सब कॉन्टिनेंट की जो हिस्ट्री होती थी उसके बारे में हमें इन्फॉर्मेशन का पता चलता था लेकिन भाई आज के पॉडकास्ट के बाद में तो आपको जो इंडिया से निकल कर हिस्ट्री दूसरे एरियाज में गई है भाई उसके बारे में पता चला मैं लिटरली बहुत सारी चीजें देख कर सुनकर सॉरी बहुत सारी चीजें सुनकर मैं हैरान हो रहा था मैं देख भी हैरान हो रही थी इवन मैं ये बात बोलूंगी कि हम लोग जब भी यू नो इंडिया के बारे में बात करते हैं तो ज्यादातर हम लोग इसी ही जगह पर घूमते हैं ठीक है ना एग्जैक्टली उससे बाहर तो हम निकलते नहीं है बट एक चीज मैं बोलूंगी कि आज इस पॉडकास्ट के माध्यम से ये बात पता चली कि लाइक सनातन धर्म इतने हजारों साल पहले और जो जो भी उसमें आप कह लो कि जो डिफरेंट पुरानाज हैं Uh, उनमें जो मेंशन किया गया है मैं हैरान ये हो रही थी ना कि इतने हजारों साल पहले बहुत सारी चीज़ों का जो है वो जिक्र कर दिया गया था एक तरह से देखा जाए तो अभी जैसे उन्होंने पताल लो का एक तरह से मेंशन किया जैसे पॉडकास्ट में साउथ अमेरिका का जिक्र किया गया जहाँ पे पीरू में जो एक माउंटेन है उसके ऊपर अब त्रिशूल नजर आ रहा है सीरियसली ये मेरे लिए तो बहुत ही कुछ अद्भुत था बहुत ही डिफरेंट था और जैसे उसके बारे में आप कहो कि उन्होंने उसको इलेबोरेट किया और जो लिखा हुआ है उसके बारे में वो सारी चीज़ें डिस्कस की तो मतलब ये मैं कहूँगी कि बहुत ही एक डिफरेंट एक्सपीरियंस था आज का पॉडकास्ट मैं कहता हूँ कि खैर ये तो अभी हमने पॉडकास्ट देखा है ना तो जब हम दुनिया के बारे में डिफरेंट डिफरेंट चीजें देखते हैं क्योंकि भाई मैं अपनी और ईमानदारी की नॉलेज की बात करूँ ना हमारी नॉलेज बहुत लिमिटेड है बहुत कम है हम जब चीजें देखते हैं तो हमें जो है ना उसके बारे में पता चलता है लेकिन हाँ दुनिया में जब ऐसी चीजें जब टेक्नोलॉजी इतनी ज्यादा इन नहीं थी जब आपको जैसे आज का टाइम देखने को मिलता है पहले का टाइम इस तरह आपको पता नहीं इस तरह देखने को मिलता होगा कि नहीं देखने को मिलता है ये भी एक हमारे दिन में चीजें चलती हैं लेकिन आप जो है ना बहुत सारी चीजों को देख जो है ना हैरान होते हैं जैसे अभी हमने जो है ये एक त्रिशूल देखा ठीक है ना लिटरली इसे देखकर जो है ना इंसान हैरान होता है फिर उसके बाद आप पैरामिड्स को जब देखते हैं ठीक है ना तो वो भी आप हम जो नॉर्मल लोग होते हैं ठीक है एक आर्कियोलॉजिस्ट जो है उनकी समझ बूझ हमसे बहुत ज्यादा डिफरेंट होती है वो चीजों को बहुत एक डिफरेंट डिफरेंट एंगल से देखते हैं लेकिन अगर हम अपनी बात करें ना तो हमारे लिए वाकई जो है ना वो एक हैरत वाली चीज होती है कि भाई ये चीजें आज से इतने हजार साल पहले जो है वो की गई और अभी तक उसके अवशेष जो है वो आपको जो है वो देखने को मिलते हैं फिर आज के अगर पोर्टल में बात की जाए तो जैसे ब्लैक सी की बात की गई द्वारका की बात की गई इंडोनेशिया से किस तरह जो है ईस्ट की तरफ गए तो भाई लिटरली चीजें जो है ना आपको हैरान करती हैं क्योंकि माइग्रेशन के बारे में तो हमने बहुत ज्यादा सुना हुआ है कि भाई पुराने वक्त में माइग्रेशन बहुत इजी होती थी जैसे आज के टाइम तो आपको वीजा प्रोसेस देखने पड़ते हैं बहुत सारी रिस्ट्रिक्शन देखने पड़ते हैं उस टाइम इस तरह कुछ भी नहीं था होता तो माइग्रेशन आपको बहुत ज्यादा देखने को मिलती थी लेकिन फिर भी जब आप चीजों के बारे में पढ़ते हैं सुनते हैं उनके बारे में समझने की कोशिश करते हैं तो लिटरली आपका जो ये वाला पुर्ज है ना एक टाइम पे आके थोड़ा सा थकना जरूर शुरू हो जाता है बीच में जैसे बाली का जिक्र किया गया और मतलब जिस तरीके से यू नो डायरेक्शन जो है वो बताई गई इनफेक्ट आई थिंक वाल्मीकि के बारे में भी जिक्र किया गया था कि उसके बीच में भी जैसे डिफरेंट डिफरेंट एरियाज का जो है वो जिक्र किया गया 
तो मेरे लिए तो ये चीज़ें वाकई में बहुत ही मैं कहूँगी कि नई थी जानने वाली फिर उसके बाद रावण रावण की लंका की बात करें सी लेवल की बात करें और मैं सोचती हूँ कि हम लोग ना बहुत जो आम इंसान है वो बहुत डिफरेंट तरीके से सोचता है इवन के अभी जैसे हम लोग इन्वायरमेंट को लेकर बात करते हैं तो जैसे एक आई आई की भी बात की जाती है उसको लेकर भी अब जिस तरीके से यू नो चीज़ें डिस्कस की जाती हैं और हमें लगता है कि शायद हमारे साथ ही ये पहली मरतबा हो रहा है या इससे पहले अगर हो भी रहा है तो पता नहीं कितनी मरतबा हुआ होगा तो मतलब बहुत सारी चीज़ें ऐसी हैं जब आप हिस्ट्री पढ़ते हो तो आपको एक क्लैरिटी मिलती है उन चीज़ों की तो जो आ, मैं कहूँगी कि रावण वाला था कि रावण की लंका के बारे में जो बात थी एक तो वो भी नया था और रावण का जो मतलब उसका जो एरिया था जैसे महाराष्ट्र के बारे में भी जिक्र किया गया वो भी मेरे लिए एक नई जानकारी तो काफ़ी दूर तक जो है बिल्कुल पहले ये लग था कि भाई सिर्फ वो एक श्रीलंका का एरिया था वहाँ तक लेकिन वो आज पता चल रहा कि भाई वो भी जो है उसमें भी आपको ये नजर आता है कि भाई नहीं वो जो मालदीव वाला एरिया हाँ। था लक्षद्वीप वाला एरिया था वो वाला उसकी लंका में जो है वो आता था फिर अच्छा हाँ। वैसे अगर पानी की अगर बात की जाए ना तो ये तो भाई ये कहता है कि पानी जो है ना वो सी लेवल जो है वो ऐसे ऐसा जो है ना वो भर रहा है लेकिन हम इंसानों को उस चीज़ का उस तरह एहसास नहीं होता जो एक आम इंसान की मैं बात करूँगी अगर बाकी जो डिपार्टमेंट होते हैं या उससे रिलेटेड जो एक्सपर्ट लोग होते हैं भाई उन्हें तो इस चीज़ का आइडिया है लेकिन समटाइम्स आप जब पढ़ते हैं चीज़ों के बारे में तो भाई आपको लिटरली बहुत सारी चीज़ें जो है ना वो हैरान कर देने वाली होती हैं जैसे द्वारका की अगर बात की जाए तो जिस टाइम यहाँ पर सी लेवल कुछ एक अलग एंगल के साथ राइज हुआ ऑन दी अदर साइड दूसरे एरियाज में एक अलग एंगल के साथ आपको राइज देखने को मिलती है क्योंकि वो उन्होंने बीच में बोली ना कि हर लैंड का एक अलग ही अपना कह लो कि उसका कह लेंगे परफॉर्मेंस होती है टेरन या टेक्टोनिक प्लेट्स को लेकर जिस तरीके से उन्होंने बात की तो मुझे अब मतलब एग्जैक्टली exactly यही बात करें इस पॉडकास्ट के माध्यम से बहुत सारी चीज़ें जो है ना वो समझ आएंगी नो डाउट ये काफ़ी नई चीज़ें हैं हमारे लिए और जब आप फर्स्ट टाइम चीज़ें देखते हो और सुनते हो ना तो आपको थोड़ा डिफिकल्ट तो होता है उसको समझना बट बाय द टाइम जब आपके कानों में वो चीज़ें पहुँचती रहती हैं ना तो आप उनको अंडरस्टैंड करना शुरू हो जाते हो सो so, मैं ओवरऑल बोलूँ तो मुझे लगता है कि भाई बहुत ही अमेजिंग पॉडकास्ट था बहुत अच्छा लगा सुनकर क्योंकि कुछ नया जानने को मिला बिल्कुल और इसके अलावा अगर हम लोग क्योंकि बात करें ना जो उन्होंने जैसे जहाँ तक मुझे लगा कि महाभारत में भीष्म पितामा जी की बात की गई थी तो पहले ज़माने में हम लोग ये ज़रूर सुनते थे कि उन लोगों की एज बहुत ज़्यादा होती थी एग्जैक्टली हाइट बहुत ज़्यादा होती हाँ अगर आपको कुछ प्लेसेस ऐसी हैं दुनिया में मुझे अब एग्जैक्ट उनका नाम या लोकेशन नहीं पता लेकिन मैं कुछ तस्वीरें इस तरह देखेंगे भाई वहाँ पे स्टेट्स जो हैं भाई जो आज के नॉर्मल इंसान है ना हाँ, हाँ, उससे ज्यादा बड़ी आपको स्टेट्स जो है वो देखने को मिलती हैं और जब रिसर्च होती है तो भाई आपको जो स्केलेटन कुछ इलाकों में मिलते हैं भाई उनकी हाइट देखते हैं तो आपको लोग काफी लंबे नजर आते हैं अच्छा एक चीज मैं पूछना चाहूंगी जैसे हम लोग महाभारत में देखते हैं ना कि वहाँ पे आ, मतलब पावर्स होती थी लोगों के पास हाँ। तो मैं ये बात पूछना चाहूंगी कि जो बाकी के लोग होते होंगे जो हमारी तरह आम लोग होते होंगे क्या उनकी एज भी बहुत ज्यादा होती होगी और, और उनको भी उनके पास भी पावर्स होती होंगी क्या नहीं ये तो मुझे नहीं पता लेकिन अगर आप हिस्टोरिक एंगल से देखें तो आपको बहुत सारे डायनेस्टीज में जो डिफरेंट डिफरेंट आप कह लें कि लोग होते थे उनके पास पावर्स नजर आती थी गॉड गिफ्टेड आप कह लें कि उनके पास जो है पावर्स होती थी और एक और चीज जो जानने को मिली कि जैसे हम हर बात का लिटरल मीनिंग ले लेते हैं वो डिफरेंट डिफरेंट जगहों पर उसका मीनिंग भी डिफरेंट हो जाता है जैसे उन्होंने असुर की बात की हाँ। और दे, जो देव देव थे ना हाँ। उनके बारे में बात किया सो so, एक चीज मुझे जो समझ आई और मैं गलत भी हो सकती हूँ अगर मैं गलत हूँ तो प्लीज करेक्ट करिएगा कि उसमें ये भी आई थिंक बताया कि हर तरह का असुर जो है वो गलत नहीं होता था है ना मतलब जो मुझे जहाँ तक समझ आई लाइक कुछ होते थे जो अपनी पावर्स को करप्ट कर लेते थे जिसकी वजह से वो मतलब बुरे बन जाया करते थे हाँ तो मुझे लगता असूर से भरी हुई है दुनिया मतलब आ तो मुझे लगता है ज़्यादा रसूर ही पाए जाते हैं नहीं अच्छे लोग भी बिल्कुल पाए जाते हैं एनी वे गाइज ओवरऑल मैं कहूँगी कि बहुत ही अच्छी वीडियो थी ज़रूर बताइएगा कॉमेंट सेक्शन में जो क्वेश्चन हमने आपसे पूछे हैं और इसी के साथ मुझे आज मेरी वीडियो चालू करें